Welcome back to Beyond the Spectrum. I am Dream, and this is the story of our family, episode five. For the next few episodes, I was looking at my schedule and realizing they're all kind of overlapping a little bit, so you'll have to excuse me if we jump around in the timeline a bit. Um, We're just going to be focusing on this general season of the beginning and the different things that we experienced. I would say probably the biggest thing that impacted us during that beginning season was his language. The emotions was definitely a close second, but when you think about transitioning into society, you can get by without having really pronounced emotions, but you can't get by as easily without language, some form of language. So with Micah, he had a lot of um, kind of guttural noises, grunts. He would point a lot and kind of nod with his head. Um, And the reason why he did that, if you can kind of jump into his mind for a little bit, if you don't like to look at people's faces and you're not studying their mouths like babies usually do, you're going to have a difficult time learning how to speak and form the words. It's not impossible, obviously, because blind people learn how to speak just fine. Um, But it's not just blindness that we're dealing with here. He's not looking at the mouth, but he's also trying not to engage a whole lot with people either. And so that's going to be a limiting factor when he's Um, learning how to speak and learning how to communicate with people. When you have any type of disability, the family learns how to cope with that. Not just a disability. I remember when my sister was younger, she was probably two years old, she had a really high-pitched voice and um, she spoke quickly. And so other people, my friends, would hear her speaking and have no idea what she was saying because she was a little girl. But of course, I lived with her, so I understood everything that she said. My friends used to go, how do you know what she's saying? She sounds like a little chipmunk. Um, But I understood everything because it was normal for me. It was just a typical, you know, conversation between me and my sister. That's the same way that it is when you're dealing with um, special needs. There are things that other people aren't familiar with, and so they don't know how to translate certain things. They don't know how to communicate as well. With Micah, uh, he had a lot of, there was patterns. Our day was very, um, it was very scheduled. And so he got used to hearing certain things from me and knowing how to respond, even if not verbally. Um, And I would anticipate what he needed. And so he would have to do very little in order for me to already, you know, kind of jump ahead and get the things that he needed um, and to kind of communicate for him. And this is what we do, right? As moms, as dads, as family members, we want to kind of anticipate and then make that flow very smooth. But the problem is, and this is what I had to be told, I'm anticipating so much that I'm doing it for him and I'm not requiring him to actually struggle through it and learn how to do it on his own, which is really, really important. If you think back to childhood, all the things that we had to learn through trial and error, if I'm eliminating the trial and error, then there really is no opportunity to grow. And so when I finally saw that and I realized it, I was able to pull back. That was difficult because when you're dealing with children on the spectrum or individuals on the spectrum, they like predictability. They like to remain in control. And Micah was now losing control because I was forcing him to do something he did not want to do. And he was not really explosive. He, he had very, very, very understated emotions. So it wasn't like I had to deal with a tantrum. I just had to deal with this beautiful child who was so easy to please. And now he was just a little downcast. And it was so hard to not just give in and make it 
make it a happy day for him. It was so hard to be the bad guy, but I had to kind of learn. I might feel like the bad guy right now, but this is going to be for his good. As far as his language and his delays, um, some of the things that we struggled with, um, he would mix up um, like syllables in words. Sometimes he would just replace syllables with words. One of the cute things that he used to do, we would say, um, Micah, if he wanted something more, we'd say, Micah, say more, please. And he would say, Moka. <laughs> and we would say, no, say more. And he'd say, mo. And we'd say, please. And he'd say, peas. And then we'd say, now say more, please. And he'd go, Moka. <laughs> it was really, really cute. That actually became one of his nicknames. My brother gave him Moka. When his language developed a little bit more, we saw he also had trouble with um, like concepts and um, sequential ordering of things and processing there. So if we were in therapy and they would say, go get something blue, he could get something blue. If we would say, go get a ball, he could choose from a variety of balls and choose one ball. But if we said, go get a blue ball, he would either go get something blue or go get a ball. He wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to kind of piece them together and, and, you know, make that one concept instead of two. And so when you think about these things, it kind of gives you a little bit of insight into Micah's mind, not in all autistic children, obviously it's different, but it might help you get a little bit of insight into their world when you realize some things just don't fire in the same way that they fire for us, right? Everybody's different and um, things are always going to present themselves differently. But when you realize sometimes it's just a matter of a crossed wire, it gives you a little bit more patience when you can see exactly what you're dealing with. It definitely helped me to realize just in an everyday situation, if I was going to tell him to go pick up his toys and put them in the box, he wouldn't be able to do that easily. He could pick up his toy, but then he just looked at you for the next you know, command go put it in the box. And then when you think about how all day long you need to kind of pause and do this in pieces, it takes a little bit more time and it can get frustrating because part of you realizes what they're struggling with, but the other part of you is like, why can't he just get it? You know, it's not that hard. It's just a second in between one and two. Why can't he just put one and two together? But also, when you have those victories, when all of a sudden he can do one, two, and three, and four, it's really a beautiful moment where you get to celebrate. And like I said yesterday in the written notes, um, to encourage you, take the time to always kind of journal these things, see the progress, see the journey. And when you have those victories, make sure you celebrate them. And just to kind of touch back on yesterday, when you think about that, when you think about the language, when you think about the little you know, differences, you can kind of see now why I was fearing for the future. Because I'm always thinking, you know, teachers don't have the time when they have 30 kids in a classroom to take it and break it down into one step at a time and wait for everybody to kind of follow along. Um, and then going further, his first job, you know, his career, bosses don't have the time nor the patience to be able to, you know, do that. So for me, you can see how one small little thing like this translates into a massive fear. And once again, I'll just reiterate what I said yesterday. Conquer it at this stage. Take it slow. Look at what you're handling. Look at what you're dealing with. And just realize that when you get that one plus two, plus three, plus four, that's going to translate into a lot of relief and alleviation of those fears because as quickly as the fears build up, they start to crumble as you start to have victories as well. And it's hard when you have these children that look to you to help and they don't see what you're doing as help. They see it as you making things harder for them. It's really hard for you to continue because it's just so easy to make them happy in the moment. But I want to just reiterate, stick with it. Be the bad guy temporarily because pretty soon you're going to be the good guy and you're going to make life so much easier, not just for them, but for the whole family. So that's my encouragement for today. 
tomorrow we're going to get into a little bit of his emotions and what we had to deal with there. Um, and yeah, that's that was pretty, it was a pretty extraordinary time for me to kind of unlock his mind in certain ways. It was really rewarding and really special time for both of us. Um, so yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>